Hi everyone, starting a new topic today, looking at energy. To start off with it, we're going to be looking at energy stores and transfers, what energy is, how it's stored, how it's transferred. So grab yourself some paper, grab a pen and follow along with me. Probably heard of energy before, thinking of, you know, energy powers your microwave, powers your PlayStation, powers your computer when you're playing Fortnite. Energy though, if we're thinking of physics and science, is the ability to do something called work. Now work in this context isn't like schoolwork or boring adult work. Work in physics is something moving. So for example, in order to add, make this work or apply work to this pen, I need to just pick it up and move it. That's it. So work is just making something move to a new position. If I were to move my pen and put it back in the same place. I've not done any work because nothing's happened overall. So it's moving something somewhere new and applying a force. Now, energy powers everything in the universe, but it never stays in one place for long. Lots of people think when, for example, you're turning on a light bulb, the light bulb is creating light energy that brightens up your room, but that's not quite true. Energy can't be made from nothing and you can't destroy it. So energy always just changes from one form into another by various forms of transfer. And that's what we're gonna look at today. So, start off with a mind map. We are going to put energy stores in the middle. And then for each energy store, we're gonna draw ourselves a little branch. Okay, our first energy store is something called kinetic energy. You might already associate kinetic with moving because kinetic energy is to do with movement. So for example, when you go and kick a ball or you fire an amazing serve in tennis, you are using the kinetic store to make that object move. Okay, our second store is one called thermal energy. Now thermal, you might associate with, you know, putting your thermal underpants on on a cold day to keep you warm. So thermal is to do with heat. So it is the energy found inside hot objects. Like your cup of tea or coffee or hot beverage of choice. I personally think tea is disgusting despite being British, but coffee all the way. Something to note is all objects have thermal energy in them, even stuff that feels cold like ice. Only when you get down to something called zero degrees Kelvin, Kelvin is just another form of measurement like Celsius and Fahrenheit, that's when particles physically stop moving. That's when we say they have no thermal energy store, the energy store is depleted. But everything, even you know an ice lolly, has some thermal energy, but the hotter the object is, the bigger that energy store of thermal energy is. Okay, our next store is chemical energy. Now, chemical you might associate with chemistry and experiments. It's chem chemical energy is sort of energy stored inside fuels and inside food that gets released during a chemical reaction. Some broccoli, I know it's not the best food, but it's the first one that's green that came into my head. Our next store is something called gravitational potential energy. Now gravitational potential is a, it's a strange one. Gravitational gives you my link to gravity and gravity pulling things down. But it's not to do with a force that pulls things down towards earth. It's actually the opposite. Things that are raised above ground level have greater gravitational potential. So the higher the object is, so if you're gonna you know, skydive out of an aeroplane because you're mad, you're gonna have lots more gravitational potential than me watching on the floor feeling safe. Uh, so the higher something is, the greater the gravitational potential. Our next store is something called elastic potential. 
or you might even hear it be called elastic energy. Elastic potential is the energy store within anything that you stretch. It could be spring, could be a hairband, could be a bit of elastic. So when you've stretched it out, it's got a larger store and the more something is stretched, the bigger the store will be. That's a spring, by the way. Our next store is something called electrostatic energy. Electrostatic, if you think of static, that might be where your hair standing on end or where you'll give someone an electric shock after shuffling across a carpeted floor. I know I used to do that to my sister when I was little. So it's to do with the energy between electrons in an atom or the energy between charges. You get a positive and negative charge. So if they are like charges, they'll repel, push away. And if they're opposite charges, they'll come together. So again, if you've got two charges, two positives or two negatives that are the same, they're going to push away and repel. And if the charges are different, they're going to come together. So like in love, opposites attract, even though that's not really true. Okay, our next store is something called magnetic energy. Magnetic energy, you know, magnetic magnets is very similar to electrostatic, but rather than talking about charged particles, we're talking about those attraction forces between poles and the magnets over your north and your south pole. With two norths or two souths together, they repel. If you've got a north and a south, they come together and attract. So again, if you have two poles at the same, north and north, south and south, they're going to push apart. So that's where the energy is. And if you've got a north and a south, they're going to come together and that's where that energy is. Okay, our final energy store is nuclear energy. Nuclear energy, you might think of Simpsons, the nuclear power plant. So it's to do with the energy that are inside the nucleus of an atom. Remember the nucleus of an atom, you have your protons and your neutrons in the middle. That's your nucleus. And then you have the electrons around the outside. So the middle bit, is the uh, nucleus. Okay, now we've looked at stores, we need to get a new bit of paper and we're gonna look at transfers. There's not quite as many this time, so bear with me. Right, energy transfers are a little bit from different from energy stores. Energy stores think of them as a, of a storage place for the energy inside an object, and the transfers are how that energy gets from A to B, so how it goes from turning from one energy store into another, or depleting one energy store and filling another one up. This time there are only four. So our first one is transfer mechanically, we call it. Now, when we talk about mechanical, think of mechanism stuff that moves and works. So mechanical is basically transferring energy through movement. Again, remember, Force is just a push or a pull that does work. Remember back to the beginning of the video, work is moving something from one position to another. So moving my pen from here to here would require work, but moving it from here, whoa, but putting it back in the same place is not work. Usually mechanical is to do with movement as well. So if you go and, you know, push a wheelie bin to the end of your drive on bin day, you are getting that kinetic store and moving it, transferring that energy mechanically by pushing the bin. Okay, our next transfer is heating. So this is the energy that makes things warmer or colder. So think of when you get up in the morning and have your hot beverage of choice, putting on a cold day, you wrap your hands around that mug because it's nice and warm. So that is the heat transferring but via heating into your hands from the thermal store inside that hot drink. When things heat up, it's always the hot particles are transferring energy to the cold one. So you're always going from hot to cold. So either if something's getting hotter, the energy is going from the hot object into the cold object, or if it's getting colder, 
that object is releasing energy into the surroundings or into another object so then it's going to end up being cold afterwards. Our next transfer is electrically or electrical transfer. You probably guessed it already. Electrical is to do with electricity. So the electricity running through your wires to power the screen you're watching this on is to do with electrical transfer. So you'd have, you know, if it was a battery powered, you know, thingy phone, battery powered, you'd have the chemical store inside the battery of that phone and that would transfer electrically into the heat coming out of your device and you know seeing things on the screen etc so if you had your power bank that's got a chemical store in it that's going to transfer electrically into the chemical store inside the battery of your phone for example the last transfer is radiation. Now it's got nothing to do with nuclear radiation, turning people green and making people grow a second head. It's to do with sound and light. Sound and light, as we'll look at future, when we look at waves, are both forms of radiation themselves. So anything that's radiation is sound or light. So an example for this one would be this old fangled device called a radio. <laughs> I don't know if you young people listen to radios anymore. But radio, if it's battery powered, you've got the chemical store in the battery. And that's going to transfer, it's going to transfer electrically into the speaker and then the speaker is going to transfer the energy through radiation into the sound that you hear. Okay, hey, that's just done for the day. Don't forget to have a go at the questions at the end of this video and fill out the Google form and I will see you next time.